I don't know. I mean, with Guns N' Roses, it was really like, between Axel and I, it was a lot of uh, intense criticism on each other, like when it came down to songwriting. Like half the songs I would play to him, he would go, oh man, that's fucking Black Sabbath, that's Led Zeppelin, blah, blah, blah. And I'd go, what the fuck are you talking about? This is something completely different. And he would, you know, he'd argue back and forth about this stuff. But he was a real nasty critic, you know. Wow. So sometimes there was a lot of nitpicking in the music, trying to get stuff finished, but uh, mm -hmm. I guess in the end it came out okay. You know? Yeah. We couldn't get a manager to save our lives. Really? They'd come in, they'd take one look at us and leave. <laughs> we, met, we met them all. <laughs> I remember one guy, me and Slash had just come back from Tijuana, and we had uh, tequila. We had an uh, apartment down in, uh, off of Sunset there, and uh, we had tequila, and you know, that black tar heroin was like the thing of choice back then. Whenever we could get it, we, we were dabbling at that time, too. We didn't have serious habits. But, you know, I remember just, you know, we sit on the couch, and one of the guys came in to meet us, and he was there 10 minutes, and he just, you know, he must have known. I guess when you're that stone, you don't. You think nobody else knows. We're all sitting there like thinking we're cool. They saw that job, but so you know. And then Alan Nevin came along, and uh, thank God he came along because he took us on, and he, you know, he probably looked at it and go, yeah, they're a mess, but you know, I think he'd been there maybe himself, and mm -hmm. he saw potential, and he worked with us, and he kind of, whether anybody says it or not, he became like the sixth silent member. Wow. And he was like major factor in getting Guns N' Roses out of this town.